those of you who've been following me, you know I've been living the the abundant life. <laughs> there you go. I love it. I've been living the abundant life, and why I call it the abundant life, and why I show off so much because that's exactly what I'm doing. For those who weren't clear, <laughs> I'm showing off because this abundant life did not, in any way, fashion, or form, cost me any seed. I didn't have to pay no tide. I didn't have to sow a first fruit, third fruit, grapefruit, orange fruit, mango fruit, none of them. So you are looking at a living witness of someone when they follow the laws, the rules, and the principles of God, then they will get the promises of God. And that's why I post my pictures and show off and travel the world and take my family and enjoy our lives, not on the box and expense on other people, but training other people to do exactly what I'm doing. Follow God's rules. Simple. No, listen, any preacher who talking mess, but you're cursed if you're not under their covering, you're their spiritual orphan and all this other foolishness, how far has that gotten you? How far? How far? Kevin don't pay tithes. Kevin don't give seed in terms of to these uh, pulpit bandits, Kevin have no covering, Kevin have no church, everything that they require, I reject. Why am I not cursed? Huh? Why, am, why am I prospering? Why am I living the abundant life? Well, very simple, Kevin. You follow the rules. I love scripture. Scripture says to us in uh, Psalms 84 verse 11b, it says, no good thing. You hear that? No good thing. Nothing beneficial for you, Kevin, shall be withheld from those that walk uprightly. Or what that mean is those who walk according to the rules. Which rules though, Kevin? Any rules? No, 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 no. The scriptural rules. I love it. Be on a ball. My God. All over Spain and Paris and Italy. <clears throat> I've been to places I don't even, I could barely spell the name. I don't need to spell the name. <laughs> the bottom line is, and, and that's what I train you to do. And I hope while I was away, you guys were delving into those videos and putting those things into practice, because that is what's going to change the trajectory and the course of your life. Giving seeds to these liars, I will never stop saying that. They are thieves, crooks, liars, deceivers. And I just can't see how people can't wake up and say, my God, all my life I was trying to pay God for his miracles instead of doing his rules, not Kevin. The day they get a penny out of me, I'm probably done pass away, and they, 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 they took it out of my hand, and I had no control over it, but never. And I want you guys to live the abundant life. I want you to enjoy. God didn't put you on this planet to suffer and toil all your life. No. I'm a man going to be 53 come September 13, 53, and enjoying life, every moment of it, retired and having a ball, wonderful family, and I love to say it, I didn't put no seed in the ground, I didn't give no first fruit, I didn't give no monkey fruit, no kangaroo fruit, no stupid fruit, none of it, none of it is required. What is required, sir? Following the rules. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Following the rules. Following the rules. We want a beautiful Mediterranean cruise. And I just was uh, sharing with DJ a couple nights ago. And I said, baby, imagine this. We were talking about this just as an idea a few months ago. Well, yeah, a few months ago. Because we had uh, actually we had surprised our, our parents, our mothers. On on uh during the holiday season, Christmas season, and we told them that we we're gonna take them on a Mediterranean cruise. But of course, they almost passed out. And I, I was sharing with Deidre how it is so beautiful that you know our parents are alive and and God has blessed us to do these things. But I said, let's look at the root, though. Let's look at the root. We didn't come on here and beg people and tell them so a seed into our ministry. And if they bless the ministry, they're going to be blessed and God is going to give them a hundredfold garbage. Foolishness, witchcraft, voodoo, sorcery. No, we empower you. 
to give. Do what we do and help the poor. Help your fellow brothers and sisters who cannot do nothing for themselves, who, who could never pay you back. Stop giving it to these clowns, taking your money and enjoying life. They're, they're traveling. They're, they're enjoying life. And as usual, let me make my disclaimer. I'm not saying don't give to your church. I'm not saying if you want to pay tithes, you go right ahead. If you want to give donkey seed, monkey seed, you go right ahead. Do whatever. If you feel God is leading you to do it, you do it. I'm telling you, I don't do it. All right? We follow that Bible. And when I look at where you, and those of you who followed my ministry from day one, you have seen the growth, the exponential growth. Okay? Day by day. And you've never heard me tell you, so a seed. You've never heard me tell you, send your offering. You've never heard me hustle you, uh, uh, belabor this seed point over and over in terms of giving, never. What did I say to you? Give to the poor. What is Kevin telling you constantly? May help your fellow man. Help your fellow. If you, if you, this is why sinners are living in the promises that you, the believer, should be living it because they're doing things not knowing that they're engaging the laws of success and wealth by helping others. And now the increase is coming to them. You know, they don't have to be safe to engage in that rule. Okay. That's for the safe and unsafe. But the Christian is, is in bondage by these demonic edifices. Not all of them. Got them tirade down. Every with the with the with the doctrine that you have to pay the Almighty God to get His promises, not do His word, not follow His rules. And I end with this: I said to you on so many occasions, I've given you this this excellent point to support my disdain for that foolishness. I am a father, and and I love my children. I love. Being a father, I love taking care of them. I love meeting their needs. I, I love it. I love that. None of my kids, if they want anything from me, I'm their father, just like God is our father. If my kids come to me for something, I'll use my, my youngest daughter, uh, Christina. She's going to be 12. If Christina will never come to me and say, Daddy, uh, I want a laptop, please. How much seed do I have to sow in your life, daddy, to get it? Seed. Yeah, you're, you're my daddy, okay? And I, I need a pair of shoes. So how much seed do I have to sow in your life, daddy, to get the shoe? So you see how foolish the seed demonic doctrine is? God says in his word, he owns the cattle on a thousand hill. The silver and gold belong to him. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. This is the creator of creation. And you're telling me that Bible that I've read from back to front repeatedly, which lays out protocols, rules, and principles, laws, and precepts, and at the end of each one of them, it gives a reward if I follow it. And you allow some nutcase, demented fool, that's what I call them, to come to you and tell you that in order to get something from your God, Elohim, El Shaddai, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in order to get something from him, he requires a seed? How many of you listening to me right now had to go to mommy or daddy for school supplies or whatever it is that you needed. You needed clothing or whatever. How many of them, how many of your parents, how many of you, sorry, went to your parents and had to give them a seed for them to do their parental duty? What was required from our parents? Obey them. Be respectful. Do what they tell you to do. Isn't that what God's saying to you also? If we sow a $1,000 seed, does it mean God will bless us with 10 times that or even 100 times that amount? That's what we'll look at today.
We're going to look at two topics today, the concept of sowing and reaping, and to start, we'll look at the parable of the sower, which the money preachers twist to their shameful gain. We can see this parable of the sower in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but we'll read Luke. And when a great crowd came together and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path, and it was trodden underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, He who has ears, let him hear. This is a verse the prosperity preachers use to sow your financial seed and God's going to give you back a hundredfold. But if people would just read their Bibles, they would understand that this is not about money at all. The next verse tells us exactly what's going on. It tells us that the seed is the word of God, not money. And the soil represents the condition of the heart or faith. We see four types of faith here, but only one is a true and enduring faith. So the next time someone refers to this parable and relates it to money with love, show them that the seed represents God's word. You might also hear the term seed faith used with the concept of planting financial seeds. They'll quote 2 Corinthians 9 saying, He who supplied seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will be in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. This passage says God supplies the seed for sowing. That is, He supplies the resources for us to give generously away. And when we give, God will supply more resources so the giving continues. Note, however, the reaping is not financial gain, but the harvest of your righteousness. It's also thanksgivings to God that overflow, not our bank accounts. The seed sown in this passage does not result in miracles or personal wealth. So what about sowing and reaping? Much of the Bible was originally written to those living in an agrarian society, that is, people familiar with working the land, managing livestock, and raising crops. So it's no surprise that many of Jesus' parables involved the farming life. God uses the law of sowing and reaping to bestow his blessing. God's blessing comes generally to the whole world as he sends sun and rain to the just and the unjust. In some cases, his blessing comes more specifically to those of his choosing, such as Isaac. Genesis 26.12 says that Isaac sowed a crop and received a hundredfold in one season because the Lord targeted him for blessing. God also warned Israel that if they forsook him and pursued idols, the law of sowing and reaping would be suspended and their crops would fail. Sowing and reaping is also a law of the spiritual world. Galatians 6, 7 says, Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So there are natural consequences to our actions. We also see in the very next verse that we reap in kind to what we sow. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Those who plant apple seeds should expect to harvest apples. Those who sow anger should expect to receive what anger naturally produces. We also reap proportionately to what we sow. So the rule of hand is the more seed planted, the more fruit harvested. We see this in 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So it's not about the actual gift, but the spirit behind the gift. And as for money goes, God knows your heart. If you are giving to others simply because you love God and want to please him, then there's a pretty good chance he's going to bless you more because he knows your motive is not yourself. But if you are planting a thousand dollar seed because the prosperity preacher you follow misquotes the Bible and tells you that you're going to get a hundredfold back, are you really doing it for the love of God? Not likely. What we do know is that God loves a joyful giver. 
So we learned in the first parable that the seed being sown is God's word. And in the second part, that giving to your local prosperity pastor has nothing to do directly in multiplying your financial seed. Is sowing seed or giving seed to a ministry money? The doctrine of referring to seed as money is based on a misinterpretation of the parable of the seed sower in Matthew 13 and Luke 8. In Matthew 13 verse 3 to 8 you read, Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places, where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Again, then the interpretation in Luke 8, starting from verse 11, it reads, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, and those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, Go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. So the interpretation in Luke clearly tells us that the seed is the word of God. So we have the seed that is the word of God, it's a gospel. Then those who sow the seed, they are spreading the word of God, they are spreading the gospel. Then we have the ground. The ground is the heart, the mind of the hearer. And then we have the 30, 60, and 100 fold increase. And this refers to the different levels at which people receive the gospel and how much fruit they will bear after hearing the gospel. Calling money a seed is popular with those who teach the word of faith or prosperity gospel. Um, for them, seed refers to money, and the sower is the person who gives them money or gives a ministry money, and the ground is the ministry or church you are giving money to. So when it comes to the increase, they will teach that this is the amount God will bless you back for sowing seed into their ministry. It can be a financial increase, or they will say, you will, God's going to give you property, or He's going to increase your bank balance, or He's going to open new doors for work opportunities, or He's going to bless you with maybe good health, or another child, or whatever. But it, it comes down to you give them money, and God's going to give you some blessing. And it's usually a, a physical blessing, finances, a house, a car, clothing, um, or even stuff like status but it's got nothing to do with spreading the gospel and seeing people come to faith in Jesus Christ and bearing fruit of salvation and I'm going to say this to you you need to be putting your money in here it, 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 it's proven good ground Todd White's not new do you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> join heirs People who ask you to sow a seed will use that term because of the doctrine associated with sowing seed. The idea that the person giving the money will reap some benefit from it. So always be cautious to those who refer to seed as money. I mean, if they are calling money a seed, then they got it from a doctrine not found in the Bible. So there's a good chance they believe all the other lies surrounding the seed faith, prosperity gospel, word of faith doctrines. Giving money to a ministry is simply supporting them financially. The person who benefits from your support is the one who receives the money or those that the specific ministry is supporting or reaching out to. For example, if you support missionaries who smuggle Bibles into North Korea, then the North Koreans that receive the Bibles, they are receiving the benefit, the blessing, because they are receiving the word of God. But this is simply financial support. It is not seed sowing. If you want to sow seeds, maybe take up gardening. 
这是我们教会这个时候最需要的。According to the Bible, do you reap what you sow? The principle of sowing and reaping is common throughout the Bible because it's something that humanity can relate to. The practice of working the ground to gain a harvest is nearly as old as humanity itself. Part of Adam's curse was that the ground would bring forth thorns and thistles in response to his work, and that by the sweat of your brow you will eat your food. Genesis chapter three, verse nineteen. Adam understood the concept of you reap what you sow, both literally and figuratively. The idiom "you reap what you sow" is most likely directly referencing one of two verses in the New Testament. One is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6: "Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously." The other is Galatians chapter 6, verse 7: "Do not be deceived; God cannot be mocked." A man reaps what he sows. As a general principle, it is true that sowing leads to reaping. It is true in agriculture, and it's true in life choices. So, you reap what you sow is biblical. There are Old Testament verses that also refer to the principle that we reap what we sow. Those who plant injustice will harvest disaster, says King Solomon, Proverbs chapter twenty-two, verse eight. You have planted wickedness; you have reaped evil, says the prophet Hosea, chapter ten, verse thirteen. They eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes, says Wisdom in Proverbs chapter one verse thirty-one. In each case, the law of sowing and reaping goes back to God's justice. While there is the real spiritual principle at work that if we sow bad things, we will reap bad things, there is also mercy. Graciously, we do not always reap what we sow. God reserves the right to show mercy on whomever He will, as He said to Moses, "I will have mercy on whom I have mercy." And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Romans chapter nine verse fifteen. It is because of the mercy and compassion of God that we can have a home in heaven, despite our sin. We sowed iniquity and corruption, and Jesus reaped our punishment on the cross. May He be praised forever. Sometimes, what looks like a harvest is not one. When Job was suffering, his friends considered the trouble as a just punishment from God for some secret sin. Job's friend Eliphaz said. As I have observed, those who plow evil and those who sow trouble reap it. Job chapter four verse eight. But Eliphaz was wrong. Job was not reaping what he had sown. The harvest had not come yet, and it would not come until the end of the book. In Job chapter forty-two verses ten through seventeen, experiencing negative circumstances does not necessarily mean we have sown negative things. The principle of sowing and reaping is generally true, but not always at work in every situation in the way we might expect. You reap what you sow holds both true positively and negatively. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Galatians chapter six verse eight. This verse summarizes the principle well. When we are selfish, proud. Unjust, sinful, and trusting in our own ability or worth to save us, we are sowing to the flesh, and destruction awaits. But when we are selfless, generous, kind, and depending on God's provision and salvation, we are sowing to the Spirit, and will reap eternal life. Faith in Jesus and the pursuit of godliness is sowing to the Spirit. Sowing to the flesh, depending on ourselves and our ability to find our own way without God's help, will reap nothing but a dead end. But when we place our trust in Christ, we will reap eternal life. His love is fertile ground.